everybody how you doing my friends today I'm doing something a little different I like to switch it up today I'm gonna to be reading the first passage the first saying of the Dhammapada the sayings of Buddha the original Buddha the original Buddha his name was Siddhartha Gautama Buddha well, his name was Siddhartha Gautama, but he became known as the Buddha. And he founded modern Buddhism, which was largely a derivative of Hinduism, mixed with other things. Anyway, but I'm not here to give a history lesson of Buddhism. But this is the original text. This is the original sayings of the Buddha. This is what started Buddhism. This is the core. If you want to understand Buddhism at all, don't look to any other books first besides this. This is the source. This is the purity, the pure message. There have been countless books written on Buddhism. They were all based on the nature and the principles laid out in this book mostly. A few other texts as well. But this is to me, I've read most all of them that I'm aware of anyway. <clears throat> to me, this is the best. This is the essence. This is the key to liberation of the mind, of the heart, of the soul to a higher spiritual path, in my opinion. So I'd like to share it with you. It reads like a psychology manual. It's not told in a lot of parables. I'm not going to read the forward. I'll read the historic note. Uh, these, these little books, these Shambhala Pocket Classics, they're awesome, by the way. I suggest you order this version of it. It's a real small little book. You put it in your pocket. Relatively cheap, seven bucks. They're even cheaper than, than that on eBay a lot of times. <clears throat> I really like this version of it because it's unabridged. Un, inter, you know, it's not modified. It's the original, inter, original translation without, like, a bunch of hoopla added around it like a lot of other texts do with original text. Um, anyway, the historical note. The Dhammapada is a collection of sayings of the Buddha, 563 through 483 BCE. <clears throat> they were probably first gathered in northern India in the 3rd century before Christ and originally written down in Sri Lanka. Oh, I got itch, sorry. My face is itchy. I need more than two hands. Okay. In the first century before Christ, uh, Dhamma means law, justice, righteousness, discipline, truth. Pada means path, step, foot, foundation. Dhamma Pada was transmitted to uh, and recorded in Pele. Pele? Uh, the conical language of southern Buddhism and it has become the spirit the principal scripture for Buddhists in Sri Lanka and Southeast Asia and then I'll begin after I finish scratching sorry it always happens like that right you have you need two hands to do something and then you got itch <laughs> Dhammapada Choices. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts we make the world. Speak or act with an impure mind, and trouble will follow you as the wheel follows the ox that draws the cart. We are what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts we make the world. Speak or act with a pure mind. I need a little book in front of me. And happiness will follow you as your shadow, unshakable. Look how he abused me and beat me. How he threw me down and robbed me. Live with such thoughts and you live in hate. Look how he abused me and beat me. How he threw me down and robbed me. Abandon such thoughts and live in love. In this world, hate 
never yet dispelled hate. Only love dispels hate. This is the law, ancient and inexhaustible. Um, powerful words that should be contemplated on heavily. My favorite, probably, maybe my favorite passage in the whole book. I've read this book over a hundred times. In fact, I have it as a book on tape, so. Yeah, that's my favorite passage probably in the whole book. That one right there. Anyway, continuing on. You too shall pass away. Wait, did I finish up there? Yeah. Knowing this, how can you quarrel? How easily the wind overturns a frail tree. Seek happiness in the senses, indulge in food and sleep, and you too will be uprooted. The wind cannot overturn a mountain. Temptation cannot touch the man who is awake, strong, and humble, who masters himself and minds the law. If a man's thoughts are muddy, if he is reckless and full of deceit, how can he wear the yellow robe, the yellow robe being a, that which a Buddhist monk would wear, meaning how can he take the holy path? Whoever is a master of his own nature, bright, clear, and true, he may indeed wear the yellow robe. Mistaking the false for the true and the true for the false, you overlook the heart and fill yourself with desire. See the false as false. See the true as true. Look into your heart. Follow your nature. An unreflecting mind is a poor roof. Passion, like the rain, floods the house. But if the roof is strong, there is shelter. Whatever, whatever, I'm sorry, whoever follows impure thoughts suffers in this world and the next. In both worlds he suffers. And how greatly, when he sees the wrong he has done. But whoever follows the law is joyful here and joyful there. In both worlds he rejoices. And how greatly, when he sees the good he has done. For great is the harvest in this world, and greater still in the next. However many holy words you read, however many you speak, what good will they do you? if you do not act upon them. You are a shepherd. I'm sorry. Are you a shepherd who counts another man's sheep, never sharing the way? Read as few words as you like and speak fewer, but act upon the law. Give up the old ways. Passion, enmity, folly. No truth. Know the truth, and find peace. Share the way. Powerful words. It should be contemplated by all human beings. Okay, that is part one. And then we'll get on to part two, wakefulness, next. Thank you very much for tuning in. Like, share, and subscribe. This is some of the best information to share in the whole universe. Okay. Catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.